Okay guys, so welcome back. It's been a little while, but I have been very, very busy making sure that I'm speaking at loads of cool events, getting the word out there about Web3 and so much more. And now I am back and I'm gonna give you a recap of everything you need to know about the world of Tezos because Tezos has a fantastic resource when it comes to NFTs and everything to do with the Tezos ecosystem. And it's called the Baking Sheet on Tezos Commons. And it's essentially like a newsletter that can take you through all of your top information about what is happening within this ecosystem. And what I wanted to do for all of you guys who are much more visual, shall we say, is to bring you the opportunity to see these roundups month on month of exactly what Tezos is doing. Now we've got a little bit of a backlog of all of this information because there has been so much going on. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna be bringing you hard and fast, loads of exciting news when it comes to NFTs to do with Tezos. And today we're kicking off with what happened a few months ago in July. We've got a bit of esports in there. We've got a bit of reasoning as to why you wanna still stick on the JPEG train. And of course, if you stick with us as well, you're gonna be looking at the opportunities that Tezos can really forge for you as a Tezos holder. So don't go anywhere. Let's dive right in. Okay, so we're going to kick off with Team Vitality. A leading esports team in Europe has actually launched a utility NFT using the Tezos blockchain. And it's called the V-Hive and it looks really, really cool. The bees are on the move. It's going to provide the first support to earn system in esports and it's basically going to allow anyone to participate on a free and easy platform, which will help to really increase that fan engagement when it comes to uh, this particular esports team. Now, uh, this is like huge news because the V-Hive, as the V-Hive grows, the opportunity for the fans and participants of this will grow as well. So you can compete with other, on lots of different quests. You can basically win loads of exclusive experiences. You can customize your uh, experience on the V-Hive as well. And this is all making you as the fans more engaged with this. And as we're seeing like the development of Web3, we're seeing how businesses, seeing how brands are really utilizing the technology behind NFTs to help leverage that customer engagement, help leverage that fandom as well. And it's really interesting to see this moving into the esports world. So ultimately, you are going to get a new fan engagement experience with this esports team. You will be, it will gather all the fans on one platform. You'll make them officially certified and everyone will be given roles, okay? within this okay and then what will happen is that they'll evolve the hive and i think this is such an interesting concept as well the idea that you'll get part of um you'll become part of something that evolves as time goes on now throughout october to december fans can actually expect lots of exclusive access to beta testing digital wearables a mobile launch app loads of quests and even more utilities launching and this is all enabled because Tezos is a fantastic blockchain to do this on. So look, what I would say to you guys, if you're interested in esports, if you're looking to kind of feel more involved in the idea of esports and you support Team Vitality, get onto the VHive right now, check it out, see how you can really get onto creating some of these um, opportunities yourself through the quest, see how you can really kind of feel more involved in this particular esports team and just look at what they are producing for you guys as the fans, because it is pretty, pretty spectacular. And I have to say, I've been mighty impressed by this. So go check it out on the VHive website, go and see all of the things that it can do for you, like I say, on mobile, digital wearables, all of that as well, and get involved. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Powered by Tezos, an exciting time to be part of esports and an exciting time for you to use the technology of NFTs and the blockchain of Tezos to be much more involved. Okay, so next up I want to talk to you about essentially the way things have been going in the last few months. People have been a little bit skeptical around NFTs, around blockchain, around everything in general to do with crypto because obviously back in May there was a crash and things are down, 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 down. But there is still hope. And I'm very bullish on this space, as you guys know. I think Web3 is the future. And I think that there are loads of great opportunities for you guys to really understand lots of different ways in which NFTs uh, can really help you 
be part of this new world that we're building. And one of the things is obviously digital art. Um, and what I love about Tezos and the Tezos blockchain is that so much digital art gravitates towards Tezos because it's a clean, green uh, blockchain. It's also really affordable with its low gas fees, which, which basically means that if you're an artist, you can essentially go and experiment on the Tezos blockchain. And you know, the, this, this article that was brought out in July talks about why um, why digital art, the digital art world in general is gravitating towards Tezos. And I just want to give you guys a little bit more of a, an understanding of this. Um, and you know, there's three huge reasons for this. Like crypto art hasn't been without its setbacks as it says here. So like so many things, blockchain misunderstandings about technology and the process involved in making this a new medium and turning its associated to its associated marketplaces have hounded those involved at every turn. So there's been lots of kind of bad press around NFTs in general. And actually, let's bring it back to the positives and why you guys might be really excited about not just the idea of digital art in Web3, but also the idea of digital art using the Tezos blockchain as well. So let's look at the things that really affect you here. Accessible cost, okay? So big brands, costs associated with things like minting, listing, selling NFTs, it's not too big a deal. But for the average Joe like you and me, you know, and in particular, if you are creative, you're thinking to yourself, these are these costs can be quite a barrier to entry, you know, getting involved in minting and spending on those gas fees, especially if you think about it about a year ago, people spending $100 a pop trying to get their work minted. It was bonkers. Things thankfully have kind of calmed down. And actually, Tezos has always made sure that it has been something that has really focused on lowering those costs uh, for people to be more accessible to the world of Web3. And with its low gas fees, it's easily positioned itself as this kind of fantastic alternative to other blockchains. There's less of an upfront cost, which means you as an artist wanting to mint or wanting to experiment will help push this space forward. So. If you are thinking about releasing a, a collection of art and you're thinking how to do it, what blockchain is the right one for me, I would definitely say to check out Tezos. You know, there's loads of great reasons why this particularly uh, this particular blockchain works for so many people in the creative industry. Now, the other thing is the philosophical alignment. Um, and a lot of people kind of going, what are you talking about with this? Philosophical alignment, who really cares about this? Well, I care about this because it's all about kind of where your core principles lie when it comes to where you want to invest in blockchain, what you want to be doing and who you're kind of supporting within the Web3 space. And if you look at Tezos' core principles, they really focus on true decentralization and universal accessibility and an industry leading uh, ecological footprint. So these are answering quite a lot of concerns that people have, you know, what are the environmental credentials? How can we make Web3 accessible for everyone? And also, are is this blockchain truly decentralized? It can answer and tick all of those boxes. And I think that's really, really important for you guys to understand if you don't already know it. It also aligns itself with the founding principles of blockchain technology, but also for those who are trying to make a living out of creating their art. It's all of these kind of principles that need to kind of work in tandem together. And I think the way that the Tezos ecosystem does this, the way that it supports its artists, its community is incredible. You will feel like you're really part of something special when you're on the Tezos blockchain as a creator. And speaking of community, I want to kind of go into this a little bit more because community is key when it comes to Tezos. And I have been so blown away by the way the community really does come together uh, on this particular blockchain. It is famously welcoming and an incredibly supportive one. This essentially results in loads of incredible um, collaborations within the Tezos community. We've seen big names, Doja Cat, uh, you know, the lead singer of Linkin Park, they're all minting on the Tezos blockchain. So big names that are kind of getting involved, but also great artists as well. And you see all of this, like, you know, these artists like developing with things that you wouldn't expect it to happen, like lawyers, uh, university professors, and so on and so forth. We see this community of lots of different skill sets coming together on the Tezos blockchain. And it's always provided itself of being this really open, inclusive community, really wanting to lend a hand to anyone who needs help. And I think that the baking sheet here, which is what we're we're looking at in a little bit more depth, is, is just a great example of that. It's keeping you up to date with what everyone around the world is doing on Tezos, which is 
amazing to see. Now, the final story that I want to talk to you about today is why why should we be paying $1,000 for a JPEG? And why is it important that we still do this? I mean, are JPEGs dead? Is this what's happening now? Is this the era of the JPEG is done? Who knows? Um, but it's certainly as we've seen the NFT landscape evolve, things have changed. But what I love about this is that um, the Tezos community still has lots of users with NFTs as their profiles. And what this article here does uh, back in July is talk about some of the most popular PFPs on Tezos and just how people are still showcasing this to really highlight that there is an opportunity within the Tezos ecosystem. So let's have a look at some of the most popular here. We've got the Tezards, 4,200 odd lizards are here. And uh, you know, people that rock this have been fans of Tezards for ages. Like the, these, this is one of the first PFPs that I ever heard of when it came to, to the Tezos ecosystem. And you can see here, the total trading volume was at 1.85 million Tez. So that's just under $3 million. So this isn't going anywhere. This is absolutely huge. Um, otters as well, massive, massive ones that people love flexing um, on their social media and showcasing that they own. And again, sales of this slightly less actually, at 626,600 just goes to show that there are still you know the variations of nfts really do get out there the artwork is incredible i mean i, I love the fact that this is all so unique in its own way i <laughs> i always think that the uh, the the tezards are always just such a cute kind of pfp for you to have and, and and you know what this is the new flex the pfps these are how you're showing off who you are as a person within web3 and and i really do love this um and then finally here's here's one which is i think is appealing to a lot of people particularly gamers as well um this has reached um three hundred and sixty one thousand dollars on um the current uh tezos exchange rate so that's 220.56 tez tezos and this is your dystopian cy cyberpunks there's only 666 of this and they're called project neon and um you know for anyone that loves that kind of steampunk cyberpunk kind of feel this will really appeal to you um and they're all got they've got 137 traits um and it's kind of this science fiction kind of feel to it which is brilliant and it's it's allowing you to kind of just really get to grips with something that i think and a community that is particularly passionate about this kind of cyberpunk era so loads of gaming uh, gaming enthusiasts will really enjoy this there are loads of others that are actually featured here on uh, this uh, article as well. And I think, you know, if you are a really, really big fan of the PFPs and you're still following that forward, then fantastic, check out Tezos. Again, so much more affordable, a fantastic way of getting involved in a PFP community. And why not flex something that isn't necessarily on the Ethereum blockchain? Well, there you have it. A little bit of a roundup for you from back in July as to what is making Tezos really tick when it comes to NFTs. I'm gonna be bringing you even more. We're gonna work through the months and just show you just a few things that you guys can check out when it comes to the Tezos ecosystem if you are interested in that. What I would say is make sure you check out the baking sheet. It's a fantastic resource. It tells you everything you need to know about the Tezos ecosystem and what is going on. And for me, that just keeps me up to date with this particular blockchain. I think it's something that I like to keep an eye on when I'm learning about a new blockchain and learning what it can do for me as a consumer as well. So if you're interested in minting on Tezos or buying on Tezos, make sure you check out these videos. I hope they're really helpful for you. And until next time, I'll see you then.